Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with horse racing tips for Sunday the 15th of September. Well, we've had a profitable day. Well, hey, so, um, unfortunately the football was absolute garbage. It never ever looked like coming in. Who would have thought there would have just been one goal? I've looked at the highlights in the Liverpool match. One goal to Forest. I don't know how Liverpool didn't score half a dozen. Um, obviously, I don't know how it got on in the Port Vale and Chesterfield, but it was 1-0 in that last time I looked. I actually clicked off it towards the end. In, it was in the 98th minute and the bet was down, so I, I thought I'd leave it. I thought <laughs> there's nothing to come. So, free horse racing selections for Doncaster races. Well, I'll tell you what, I actually really like the look of these. Um, I think all four of them have got... Because normally, I'll, I'll like horses and I'll fancy horses or I'll be strong on horses... But even when I'm struggling on horses, it doesn't mean they'll come anyway. But these horses tomorrow, they've got fantastic ang fantastic, fantastic angles to each and every one of them. Um, I'm going to keep it brief. I'm not going to keep rabbiting on for ages. But let me get into it. So what I've had is, and well, in fact, sorry, Saturday's result was, it was £20 on. It was £10 if you just backed the horses. And I believe, I may be wrong, because what I did is, um, I actually... Add a few pence extra um, each way on some of the same selections that, that did all right. So in the end, I got 48 quid back, but I know people didn't get that back. But I do believe if you back the horses only, it was £10 on, about £42 back. And it was a bit unlucky with that. Well, not unlucky. We could have got four out of four placed in that one, in the other one as well. Um, yeah, so one of the lucky 15s made £27, which is not bad, just for £3. So, let me get into it. So, yeah, like I said, it's a 10 pence each way, lucky 15, twice. One bet taking the prices, one bet leaving the prices, and 25 pence each way singles. That takes it to £8. So, the first selection is Badry at 13 to 2 in the two of 5 past 2 at Doncaster. This is one of them dodgy races for a start where it's a money back special rather than being an extra place race. Um, basically, it's rob dogs in my opinion. So Badry, um, it's changed trainer. I actually thought it changed trainer for like this was like the first or second run. I think it's actually its fifth or sixth run now for Michael Harrington after swapping from Julie Camacho. Well, this horse is better over five furlongs. Um, I just don't think it... Well, I just don't know what... Um, does it not stay over six furlongs? I don't know, but it does see out the five furlongs very well. It's ran in some very valuable races this season. Um, some of them for Michael Harrington and some for Judy Camacho. But it's it's still got the same owners, which is quite interesting. So they've only switched stables. So it's back over five furlongs. I think there's a much weak, this is a much weaker race than it's been running in. Um, it shouldn't be, don't get me wrong, it won't be leading. Uh, it shouldn't be too far off the pace. I think it'll be, you could class it as being between in touch and mid division you know like if there's 10 runners i'm expected to be four fourth four fourth fourth or fifth it stays on well and i think i think this course will be okay for it i'm pretty sure yeah it did actually badry ran in the portland um this time last year so it's obviously it's in a you could say a much less competitive race this time around and i think it's got a decent chance the ground's fine for it, by the way. The next selection is Spanish Blaze at 9-1 to one in the 240 at Doncaster, paying four places instead of three. I think it's got a good chance. Um, it's trained by Marcus Trigoning, ridden by PJ McDonald. I, I do like both of them, to be fair, but Marcus Trigoning isn't the force of old. Um, so this horse, it ran actually ran on this card again last year, but... It was only a two-year-old two last year, so clearly it didn't run in this race. But it ran on the card. Um, I think it's in better form than what it's showing. Um, and I think it's got a decent chance. It's not much more than that, really. I like the combination. I like I like it when Marcus Trigonin sends his horses quite a distance. And the third selection is Elm at 6-1 to one in the quarter past three at Doncaster, paying four places instead of three. So this horse... Um, I think it's progressing quite quickly, although I, I, I don't believe it's um, handicapped Mark. He's jumping up too much. So I think it's very well handicapped. I am a massive fan of Ed Bethel, but I always seem to be on the wrong end of him. It's like I always fancy something else in the race, and it's one of his that, that ends up coming to beat me. Well, 
I do recognise these colours. I think they're quite well known colours, um, Elms colours. So um, yeah, I think I think it's due to run well. And um, and the next selection is the nap. So the next selection is the nap. If I had to go for a second best, it would be Badgery. Third best would be Elm, and Spanish Blaze would be. Um, the least confident, although I, as I said, I do like the look of all of them, but it doesn't mean they can't all come last. So the final selection is Miner's Gamble, and I think they've got this completely wrong. So Miner's Gamble at 10 to 1 in the 450 at Doncaster paying five places instead of four. So this is trained by, by Brian Ellison. We've already seen, well, we've already been on the right end of some of his horses, but most notably it was Tolstoy when I backed it to, I think it was 16s at York. The first, I think it was the very first time it won. And that's done really well since then. Uh, well, this horse, I won't say it's got, it's got a very slightly similar profile. Is that it's like keeping under the radar. However, it did win last last time, but it seems to be getting better and better. The f every time it stepped up in distance, and guess what? It's going up in distance again. So it ran over one mile one last time at Musselburgh and won. And it actually won quite readily. So to, to be keen and come from behind and win quite readily, it tells me that you're a horse banging form. Um, it also tells me that um, it definitely stays one mile one because w with it being keen and with it with it winning readily, it shows that it's in like good, was it good good fettle? So um, so this horse, it's still I think it's only only rated something like sixty six still. So um, I looked at the breathing of this and I looked at the dam. So I'm thinking I'm thinking to myself. Um, oh, will it will it want much further? I looked at the dam, and she's she's one mile four plus. So I think stamina is no issue whatsoever. So um, I think the step up and trip will actually help it. I, I, we could really do with it out without it. Or on low battery, we could really do with without it being um, keen. But maybe that's just how it is anyway. So I do think it's got a cracking chance. There are, in my opinion, there are one or two darts over. Uh, quite a few of these because a lot of the other runners have all have, have already not already have also won last time as well. There's actually I think it's like the first six in the betting. I think the last five of them, uh, five of them have actually won last time. That includes this horse as well. But also um, you've got Young Fire. Well, Young Fire is probably a bit of a doubtful stay. Although it won, it stayed on quite strong last time over a mile and two, or even a mile two and a half at York. But it was tied up towards the finish because I remember Mr. S. Walker riding it and um, it just seemed to like, I won't say it were faltering or anything like that. It was just, whether it was idling or not, I don't know. It could be idling, could have won very easily. But I just, um, Young Fire's only gone up two pound. I still couldn't fancy it though because I, I don't like these horses when they only go up a couple of pound. And I know people might think, "Well, oh, yeah, jackpot," but um, I, it's not. It's not for me really. And obviously, when I'm backing each way, I'm not really looking for horses that won last time. But minus gamble, as I said, I think it's you can't ignore Brian Ellison at Doncaster uh, or or these northern tracks. Um, it's been quiet for the last few years, but he seems to have really come into his own now. So um, yeah, so low battery. So. Yeah, low, Miner's Gamble is the nap of the day, followed by Badry, followed by Elm, followed by Spanish Blaze. So if you can give me a like and a subscribe, I hope you did well out of Saturday's selections. So the very best of luck, Charlie Winters, over and out. Cheers, mate.